Hello, hello everyone! Welcome to one more episode of Google Ads Explained. So today we're gonna cover the topic of Google Analytics Assisted Conversions. Uh, this topic is a personal favorite of mine because I actually do like the fact that it's uh, not as spoken as much. So I decided to make a video about it. I think it's quite important because um, it's a topic that uh, isn't, isn't often reported as much as like conversions or sales, uh, but it does play a role in the overall picture of, and also especially things we can do in order to make a positive impact on a website and digital marketing as a whole. So let's look at the definition first of all. According to Google, uh, assisted conversions and assisted conversion value is actually the number and actual also monetary value of sales conversions that the certain channel assisted. So if a channel or traffic source device type uh, landing page appeared anywhere except as the final interaction of that conversion funnel, on a specific conversion path, it is considered an assist for that conversion. So the higher these numbers, the more important the assist role of that channel. What does that mean? Uh, it means that there are several ways people arrive on your website and through several triggers and visiting several pages, but there's pages or devices that even though haven't received the final credit for a specific sale or a lead generation, they helped quite heavily the overall uh, path to that purchase or lead generation. I have an example for you that makes it very easy to understand. And that is this one. So on the this specific example, we have a three step uh, degree conversion journey where everything actually starts with a mobile ad click on a specific generic search campaign. So unbranded keywords, for example, and this accounts for one assisted click from a Google Analytics standpoint uh, on the mobile. This is followed up by a mobile branded search campaign, perhaps because of brand recall. Now the person remembers the name of the website and it counts as a last click conversion just before the final checkout procedure eventually on the desktop. On the example below, we have the uh, one more device that plays a role both as assisted conversion or also generating the real conversion, which is the desktop. So here the journey starts with a mobile ad click once again, but somehow somebody did decided to make a research first on the desktop and also afterwards coming back to a mobile ad click and eventually finalizing the purchase or lead gen in the desktop again. So what does this mean? Uh, yeah, it means that funny enough in both cases, mobile did play a role uh, in assisting the conversions twice and uh, so we generated big deal when it comes to the final action, which happened on the desktop. But most likely nowadays we assume the desktop is a real big impactful device for this to have happened. But we can see from this example, this is not true. So this is a game changer in my view, because it means we still can bet on mobile ad campaigns and still can optimize websites to be responsive because it does make a difference in the end. Um, but even better, let's look at actually the Google Analytics assisted conversions section to see how it looks like in the interface. So you can find this information under conversions, multi-channel funnels and assisted conversions. The way the information is presented is pretty straightforward you can choose from a certain type of conversion goal. Here, the specific website has affiliate link click-through rates, 
because it's the last step people have taken before uh, an affiliate commission is made in a third party website. And you can divide this by all types of assisted conversions or purely Google Ads related, for example. And you also have a look back window of uh, up to 90 days so that you can understand how much days it takes for the conversion to happen, which is especially interesting to assign for attribution window in uh, Google Ads as well. Um, we have three ways of viewing this timeline chart. One is the path position. The other day, the other one is days before the conversion happened. Uh, in this specific case, most of the times it's a quick process. It takes either one, two, three, seven days max. And also the real exact days where the conversion happened. Well, the assisted conversion happened. And here is where we get the real deal. So here we see raw data of which channels assisted the conversions the most. So in this specific case, organic search is the biggest contributor for the conversions. But we can also organize this by like things like device, where we understand right away whether, for example, mobile does play a tone in the overall purchase or conversion path. So it's not the number one leading, but it's close enough to desktop. And um, another important dimension in my view is landing page URL. Why? Because we get a quick glimpse of which pages uh, helped to generate a lead or a sale, even though they didn't have the final call um, on, for that sale or that lead to happen exactly on that page. It could have been one of the steps people took along the website session to, for that conversion to happen. Uh, here we have a column for assisted conversions, which is the number of conversions for which this channel appeared in conversion path, but was not the final conversion interaction. And here we have an interesting ratio, which tells us if a value is close to zero, it indicates that this channel functioned primarily as a final conversion interaction. If it's close to one or even higher than one, the channel function in an assisted role. Uh, so it's interesting because it's like the assisted conversion index, let's say. Uh, the power the page has in helping other pages to convert. <laughs> and um, yeah, in which ways can you use this information? Um, very easy. For example, you can compare both the assisted conversions on this right hand side with the overall go goal completion locations. So on the left hand side, you see which pages generated the final lead or a conversion. And on the right, left hand side, you see which secondary pages helped that final conversion, even though it was not on this pages that happened. Uh, so what's interesting here is that you can do is like look up the best assisted conversion page and see in which place of the ranking of goal completions it shows up. Uh, why? Because perhaps you'd like to optimize the page better to get more direct conversions happening on the page instead of helping other pages. So perhaps decreasing the pages per session per conversion, for example. Uh, yeah, so working on more straightforward call to actions, reducing the length of the tests in case it's too long, uh, hyperlinking better, many things you can do. Or even choosing to optimize for SEO with the right expectations from the keywords that make people land on the page. And for that, you'd have to go on the Google Search Console and so on. There's a lot that you can do. And you can also do the reverse thing. You can look at the pages that uh, have the least say in assisting conversions and try to kind of do a diagnosis on what's the problem there and what can be done to, to improve 
the the help they support for the conversion to happen so perhaps call to actions once again or optimizing for seo not so cluttering with too much information depends and uh, yeah that's it thank you very much for this uh time um yeah it was a pleasure to talk about this topic with you and uh, yeah this channel is growing i have plenty of videos on different topics so please make sure to subscribe if you like this content and hit uh, the, the bell as well so stay tuned and thank you very much and uh, have a good rest of the day